Hello, this is Daniel Thomas Sender Daily. This is a Noahide sermon, Signs, Seasons, Days and Years. Signs, Seasons, Days and Years. Okay, I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the less light to rule the light, and the stars. God sent them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and was evening and was morning. The fourth day. Okay. And Genesis chapter 8 verses, verse 22, as long as the earth endures, seed heaven harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. So I'll read that again. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22, as long as the earth endures, Sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. Okay. And just to read the, uh, the basic passage in Genesis 1 again. And God said, Let there be lights of the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and years. Signs, seasons, days, and years. Signs, seasons, days, and years. Okay. All right. Now, in the um, in Judaism, in charism for the Israelite people. They, uh, they celebrate a new moon. The new moon to mark off the beginning of the new month. So, um, yeah. They celebrate the, the new moon. It's a bit of a thing in Judaism. Whatever. Now, a solar year has 365 and a quarter days in it. 365 and a quarter days. The time for the Earth to go around the Sun, the revolution around the Sun, is 365 and a quarter days. Of course, a day has 24 hours in it, and uh, that's a complete revolution of the, the Earth on its axis of 23 degrees, approximately 23 degrees. In relation to the sun, I guess. So, a solar year has 365 days in it. Now, a lunar month has 29 days, 12 hours, 44 minutes, and 3 seconds. I think that's the, the exact timing. I looked that up the other day. That's a lunar month. Now, there are uh, approximately 12 lunar months a year. Well, there's a bit over. In Judaism, they reconcile this with a, a contrived calendar which sort of measures the barley harvest and they have an extra month every now and again. But uh, generally, that's a contrived system. Supposedly, that's God's religion. Not just Moses doing that. Supposedly, that's the word of the Lord's commands. I'm not 100% convinced that everything in the Bible is directly of God, but uh, supposedly, that's God's system. But regardless, that's not the Noahide system as far as I'm aware of. So there's um, signs, seasons, days, and years. The lights set in the sky 
in the day, dominate the day, the sun, which is, as far as we understand, it's just a regular star. It's called Sol as well. It's a star which we rotate around 365 times, uh, 365 days takes us to rotate it around at once. That's called a year. And the sun measures a a day for us. So in a sense, from dawn to dusk until the next dawn, that's our day. And we sort of measure it by the sun, I suppose, and the moon. That's the day. Completes a day. So that's one of the the times that we're under is a day. And we have a year system, which is we go around the sun in a year, 365 days. We know that from, oh, well, mankind's recorded that information for a long time now, and with modern science, the accuracy is quite, quite close to, ex very exact, of exactly how long it takes us to get around, a, a, a lunar month is, and a year, so we know very, very, very accurately how long a year is. Not infinitely so, because only God probably could re reckon that. But as close as we, we need to as human beings anyway. So we have a day and we have a year. But we also have a month. Now in the solar year, there's various calendars which are used. And we use, I think it's called the Julian calendar or the Roman calendar. It's the Roman calendar we use in the West anyway, in, in, in Australia and in the USA and in the UK and very, very many places, mostly everywhere, but not, I don't think quite everywhere. We use the Julian calendar, which has 12 months. We divide the year up into 12 months. They're artificial months. They're not really precisely lunar months. They're uh, contrived months. Sort of um, January is 31 days, February is 28, and in a leap year, 29 days because um, because it's 365 and a quarter days a quarter every four years that adds up to a day so uh, you have to add in the quarter of a day every now and again so we um, have to add in a, an extra day every four years which is ironically the Olympics year if you want to know when is the leap year every time the Olympics rolls around that's the leap year the next one is in the year 2020 uh, two years from now is the next leap year so that's when we artificially add in an extra day, the 29th of February, the extra day added in. But uh, if you want a little clue, January 30, like your thumb, your, your, not, your notches and your, your gaps, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, you repeat August, September, October, November, December. So we go from your notch to your, your little gap part, then to the notch again. 31, February is an exception, which is 28, slash 29, and 31 days in March, 30 days in April, and so forth, following that system, 31 days and 30 days, 11 of the months are divided up into 31 days and 30 days, except February, which is 28 days, and a leap year, 29 days. But that's an arbitrary and artificial division of solar months. There's, there's nothing... There's nothing in the natural order about 12 months for a year. There's nothing natural about the division of 12 months. It's a completely man-made system. There's nothing natural about it. The months themselves are actually normally, I suppose, it's probably derived, moon derives from months, or months derived from moons. It's usually probably based on the moon. The lunar month, the complete cycle of the moon from crescent to full, full moon, new moon, the half moons and so forth, to crescent to total brightness and total darkness and so forth. That complete cycle, 29 days, 29 and a half days as I was explaining. That's really what a month is. And uh, yeah, that, that, so that's the month and that's, that's a year. And then also we have the seasons. As we see in the end of Genesis 8, summer and winter, hot and cold. So, um, 
we have hot and cold in summer and winter. The year normally, although we, we, we normally in the Rambo Tour, it seems to be divided up into the hot and the cold, summer and winter. Now we, we add in autumn and spring. You could mark autumn by what it's, what it's called in America fall, when the leaves start to fall, autumn. And spring, when the, the snow starts to melt, spring. But they're probably, yeah, I'm not 100% sure how originally in the Rainbow Tour, in the Noahide Adamite period, whether they had four seasons. I don't really know for sure. I don't know for sure when the four seasons started. But in the Rainbow Tour, the seasons seem to be there. The hot and the cold. Seems to actually be two fundamental seasons in early Genesis. The hot and the cold. But it does say seed, uh, planting of seeds. So, um, and harvest, which is summer. So, I think different plants, you plant seeds at different times. So, I'm not sure if it's, it's completely a, uh, if that's season based in Genesis, say like that part of the passage. I'm not sure if it's talking about a season just when you plant seeds. There's a time for planting seeds. It's not you don't plant all the seeds at all the same time. If you're familiar with gardening shows on television, or if you have gardening knowledge, you know that different plants you plant the seeds at different times of the year. So it's not necessarily a season which is like what what would be like winter or, or autumn potentially. Or, or spring, it doesn't really specify as far as I can tell in the natural cycle if there's a, there's a, a month or a season for planting seeds. Depends on the plant. And in reality, um, if the plant survives, you can potentially plant them at a lot of, a lot of different times of the year. Um, so, when you plant it, I suppose. If it survives, it probably doesn't really matter. Um, so really, in terms of seasons, in as an Noahide, we have the hot and we have the cold, and that's that's the way it is in the Rainbow Torah. So we have a lunar month, a solar year, a lunar month of twenty nine and a half days, a solar year of three hundred sixty five and a quarter days, and the hot season for summer, and the cold season for winter. And we have days composed of daylight hours and sunlight hours and moonlight hours, which are the day and the night. But of course, people would know that the moon does can appear in the day as well. The sun doesn't uh, really appear at night because it's gone down, hasn't it? That's that's a fixed rule, really, because that's how it's defined. But the moon can appear. Uh, that's how it's defined. Well, the moon can appear when the sun's up. It can appear. So, uh, I suppose technically you could argue that well, that could be a twilight time or something. I don't really know for sure. But if they're appearing at both time, usually we still call that the day, don't we? We might call it the night. It's a, it's a crossover period because you do get the sun and the moon visible at the same time. So they, they, they can be in the skies and you can see them at the same time. You can see the sun and the moon at the same time. So, I don't know, maybe that's twilight or... It's probably got a special name for that period of time. When that's happening. I don't actually know if there is one, but I might look that up one day. But regardless, the day is 24 hours and uh, that's marked by the, the Earth going around the sun in a full rotation now the Earth's spinning on its cycle, so that it sees the sun and sees it not. 24 hours, that's the day. Going around the sun is the year. So the signs, seasons and days and years, they mark for the signs, the seasons and the days and years. The seasons are the, the hot and the cold. The years are the solar year and the... Uh, Days is a day, and the sign, I guess, seasons could be the, uh, signs could be the month. 
um, or it could be a season of the month, but I, that could be the sign. I'm not percent sure. So, in the natural order of things, the way God created the world, the moon and the sun have a purpose in sort of governing our life for for the uh, and the stars for the hot and the cold, the days and the year. Okay. Now, um, it's probably very normal to count the years. We see in Genesis five and Genesis ten. Uh, Genesis five. We see genealogies in Genesis 10, but we see in Genesis 5 genealogies with ages given. Adam's age upon his death is given, and so forth for each of the ten patriarchs, the ten desiarchs, the desiarchs from Adam through to Noah, their age of death is given, and when they had a certain son, which was at a certain age. So that age and number of years is from the number of, number of years, how old they are in years, the tradition we've received is that it's, that's years and that's a solar year. So, for example, Adam lived to 930. From creation, 930 years later, the death of Adam. So that's years. So one thing, learning from Genesis 5, we do, with, a, with a, the, using our rotation around the sun as a year, we measure that as years of our life, how old we live, how long we live. So that's measured in years, how long we live. For example, I'm 45 years old, uh, and 45 and a half years old approximately. So I've been on this planet Earth for 45 rotations of the sun and a bit. For the Earth, going around the sun 45 times since 1972, not November 1970. So, as the ages are given in the Rainbow Torah, it's a very normal idea to count the actual years. Now, theoretically, if, if the world goes on forever and ever and ever and ever, it says in Genesis 9, as long as the earth remaineth. So, theoretically, if the everlasting covenant goes on for all eternity, uh, the year keeps on growing with it. Now, with our super-powered computers, we can count numbers, huge numbers. But eventually, even the, the greatest supercomputer in the fullness of a long bloody time can't really register the number terribly well because it's beyond its memory capabilities. Now, that's so far in the distance that it's really, it's not really an issue yet, but... Uh, Theoretically, it's, it's beyond our ability to actually measure the years forever. Um, I guess theoretically, if in a world to come situation, if such a thing happens, um, and they develop a supercomputer, if, if the world's expanding or growing forever, and we, we can develop a computer system which can keep on growing, I suppose theoretically they can keep the number, well, we're never going to be able to say it in, in regular conversation, um, in, in talking. You're never going to be able to say this for a number of years at a certain point when it's ridiculously large. So, um, what I'm drawing out and all I'm saying there is the idea of keeping a calendar going forever. We can't really do it, of, a, of time since creation. Can't really keep it going for all eternity just not practical and can't say the, the, the year. All we can really do is uh, whenever it happens, if, if the world goes on that far, is at a certain point, that's the end of the calendar of years, we're keeping years and I, we start again with a new system. We start a new calendar. That's all that we can practically do. Personally, I, personally, I think, well, I guess maybe. 10,000 years might be a realistic time to start again, or, or a million years, maybe a million years, well, we've done a million years, start the calendar again. 
in the advancing arm moment we have a, a since creation calendar which I I did my reckoning on biblical dating and this is in my reckoning the 6181st year since creation so 6181 SC in the common era calendar which is a Christian calendar also this is the year 2018 which is reckoned as since the birth of Jesus calendar can't really go on forever. God can keep it forever. Because he can remember infinite numbers. So he can always keep it forever. I assume he can remember infinite numbers. So God can keep the calendar forever. So he always knows what the year is. But um, I don't think a human being, unless he get graphs some sort of my knowledge into us capable of doing that, we generally can't really in our normal comprehension. Maybe the brain, as we age over time, however we go on with our eternal life, becomes more intelligent with time. I don't really know. Probably not, but I don't know. I mean, and we're able to speak more quickly and we're able to say more words more quickly and uh, a way our, our vocal cords might be able to combine words more quickly and we might be able to think more quickly. And maybe we, in time we can keep pace with it. And who knows? That's a consideration, isn't it? Maybe I can say uh, a number which has got like a, a quadrillion numerals in it. That's a lot of numerals. Maybe I'll be able to say that in in a conversation once, like I, or something like that, which has got a trillion little syllables in it, if you know what I mean. It's like a trillion little syllables, but I've been I've been able to say that because my my intelligence quotient has increased to such a degree, and my sophistication through such a long age has increased to such a degree. And people can understand that there's a number. That would be an interesting thing. Probably not, but it's a nice hypothesis, isn't it? But uh, regardless, the, the solar year, for want of a better word, we count off the years, moment to reckon our life, the length of our lives, but to stay abreast with history and how old the world is and the, the signs and the seasons, the, the history mainly. And for setting dates of when we're planning to do things for our time table of events in our, in our lives. Now, all of that is the natural system created by God. It's the natural order of things. The artificial months of January, February, March, April, they're not really the natural order of months. The natural order of months are the lunar month, which has its own thing associated with it. So there's nothing terribly Noahidic about January, February and so forth, apart from the fact that it's created by seed of Noah, I suppose, Noah's offspring. There's no, 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 uh, no basis in the Rainbow Torah for necessarily keeping that. I tend to keep it. It's generally part of the A&M way of doing things, the January-February system. But it's not necessarily, it's not really ordained in, in Scripture for that to be the case. The month normally is the new moon uh, every 29 and a half days. And of course, if you wanted to switch to a, uh, you don't necessarily have to go by the year to measure your life. You could if you wanted to, if you developed uh, within your own cultural way of doing things, a monthly system for um, organizing your life and measuring, measuring your life, measuring the time of your life. How many months have you been alive? How many lunar months have you gone in? Have a calendar which works, have a work life, a pastime life, a, your life which works according to a lunar monthly calendar. Maybe Lunar Love Good from Harry Potter thinks that's a good idea. Who knows? But you could count the months, the lunar months, as the age of your life if you wanted to. You could count the days of your life if you wanted to. I'm 43,729 days old. Thank you very much. <laughs> and if you really wanted to, with, with the artificial creations we have, you could use hours or s minutes or seconds to count your life if you really wanted to however you want to go about things. But the biblical system is lunar months, 
solar years, the hot season, the cold season, and uh, the normal day. The day. Evening and morning, the first day. So that's signs, seasons, days, and years.